We're going tomorrow to meet and photograph a man named Fakir Mushafar, who calls himself a modern primitive, and uh, he has some extraordinary piercings in his body. The reason I'm impressed with this man, he seems to exhibit a whole multi-leveled spiritual dimension in his work. Well, I originally came from South Dakota, and um, in South Dakota, I actually grew up on an uh, Indian reservation. This was the uh, Sisseton Sioux in the northeastern corner of the state. Trouble with growing up on an Indian reservation area is the fact that the people who lived there uh, around me were very prejudiced against Indians, you know. They hated Indians. Indians were like dogs, uh, have nothing to do with them. And uh, my problem was that uh, being the kind of person that I am, I liked the Indians. I had a lot of Indian friends and just seemed to gravitate naturally out into the wilds, out into the woods, and uh, to all the places where the Indians used to go. Did um, you have a normal childhood? In spite of the fact that uh, I did have these uh, drives to do things that weren't quite normal for the society I was in, I still did, you know, lived a rather normal life there anyway. <clears throat> Went fishing, and uh, I used to go out hunting with my dad, go pheasant hunting. I never shot the birds, but I just loved to tramp through all the swamps and fields and, and so forth and through the, the wooded areas around the area where the Indians used to be anyway. And uh, I had to follow and conform to whatever it was this uh, family was that I was <clears throat> brought up into. And so I was, uh, was confirmed in the uh, Lutheran Church. Why did you leave South Dakota? And when did you leave? Well, I uh, didn't leave voluntarily. I was uh, drafted into the Army and I uh, had finished uh, college in that area. Anyway, I served my term in the Army and uh, went back to South Dakota and tried teaching school for a while, uh, one year, in fact, but I resigned at Christmas time. I was out in a small school, and I had a lot of Indian kids, which was the only saving grace in that school. So I packed everything I owned in an old blue Chevrolet and just headed west. And uh, eventually uh, ended up, of all things, uh, working uh, in a corporation in the uh, San Francisco area here doing advertising work. <clears throat> and that uh, went on fine for a few years. And finally, I started my own business. Uh, I met uh, a gal, uh, got married, and had a rather conventional life uh, here on the San Francisco Peninsula. Tell me about uh, modern primitives. Well, actually, Charles, uh, I don't think any modern primitives are modern. See, I really believe that people have lived before. And the thing that compels most people that I have met is the fact that they did these things many, many times before, and they were very, very heavy into this. So I think that modern primitives are actually just people who are going back and reliving the high points or being the beings they were uh, in some previous life. You don't think this is conditioning? This doesn't have anything to do with conditioning? I don't think it has hardly anything to do with conditioning. As I told someone just recently, uh, the greatest factor that determines how a person is going to behave and react to the society they're in is probably the lives they lived before and had little enough to do with the, from the fetus to six years of age, you know? Really, I honestly believe it. And I think in this... Uh, Modern primitives, uh, when you study these people, the ones who are real uh, atavists, I think that you finally you begin to see it. I mean, it, it becomes very, very clear. There's no way that conditioning could have made these people do the bizarre things that they do. Like, uh, you know, uh, I had a compulsion to do this when I was like only about uh, 10 or 12 years old. And I just was obsessed. I uh, wanted to have holes and I wanted to pull on them. I wanted to do sun dance like the Indians did. I had done it as an Indian, apparently. And uh, I don't know of anything in my background that could account for that. It's just absolutely impossible that it could have happened uh, from conditioning. I don't see where it could have come from. And the more modern primitives I know, the more this seems to be the case to me. What's your relationship to pain, then? Uh, you said something about the body producing a substance that blocks the pain. 
Do you feel any pain when you do these rituals? No, really, Charles. Uh, if there was pain, you wouldn't do them. When you're, uh, you know, I have a normal sense of pain just like anybody else. If I touch something hot, it hurts. But the body can produce its own painkillers. It's called the encephalins system, I guess. Anyway, this is a substance. There's some kind of a substance you can produce uh, by going through the right preliminaries and so forth. And you can block out or numb yourself to such a degree that you can actually do self-surgery. And I believe this is what all the primitive people and the people who did these things, the Indians and all, that's what they did. I mean, they didn't know what they were doing, but this is how it works. And I figure that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Now, you describe doing it as a spiritual exercise, and it looks absolutely crazy to us, but at the same time, an American boxing match or a football game would be just as weird to that side. Yeah, I know what you mean. Both are about pain, right? So what's going on? Are they both about the same thing? Uh, except that all other parts of the world, like in India, where they have rites that involve pain, uh, the people participate. There's a great difference between this culture and those cultures. In those cultures, all the rites and all these things, uh, people get involved in themselves. <clears throat> in our culture, it's all secondhand. It's all spectator sports. You know, there are only a handful of people and 80,000 people in the Silver Dome watching the football players smash into each other and get hurt. Uh, they're trying to have a physical life vicariously through the football players. And I, from another culture's viewpoint and from my background, think that this uh, is a very strange way to behave. Uh, it doesn't seem like it would be very satisfying. When do you get enough? So I suppose the way it comes out is in rather negative social behavior. After the game in Oakland and San Francisco, they had riots. There was looting. There were people being injured and shot. All as a matter of hysteria from the football game. Well, I like primitive cultures. There are people go out, they go through these physical things, they feel the physical pain, the physical experiences themselves, personally, intimately, and then it takes all hostility out of their system. It gets rid of something. Something inside needs to be done with you, you know, and it comes out. All right, Charles, now we're all set for the big experiment. I want you to get right up here and kneel in front of the bed of nails. Just kneel right down here. All right. Now just feel these little buggers here. Sharp. Move your hands around. They're not terribly sharp. They're not going to hurt you at all. Mm -hmm. No, it will be a little discomfort, but it's not going to hurt you a whole lot. Okay. All right, Charles, we'll do this very slowly now. I want you to just get over here with your hand on each side of the nails here. Like a get, your, uh, get your knees up a little bit closer here to the end. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, up on your toes now. Bring your body forward more. Just, just your tummy, very gently. Not your whole body, just your tummy. Just let it down there. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right, now just gradually, slowly, let yourself come down on there. How's that feel? Oh, it's wonderful. Now you can let your shoulders down if you're a little bit steadier here. All right. That's the idea. How's your head there? I'm on. Yeah. It hurts all over. Well, you see what you have to do. What I train people to do on this is to lay on there. The first five minutes, if you can stand it, are very uncomfortable. And you're feeling that right now. Okay, you better take me off. All right. Now, you stay down there longer, you will be in training. But at least you did it, and it didn't kill you. Slowly, slowly, ease your way off, bend your back. That's it. Wow. There we go. Now, just come back down on your knees here. Here we go. Okay. Wasn't too bad, was it? 
I don't think we had your Kevlin <laughs> system working full bore. No, I, I don't think I was relaxed. Ah, uh, yes, you were a little tense. What do I think of Fakir? I think Fakir is a pioneer. I think Fakir is an astronaut of inner spaces. He seems to be serious, and he seems to believe in magic and ritual, and um, he certainly has a mind and an energy uh, behind his work that I find uh, uh, phenomenal. It would be so easy to dismiss him as a California eccentric with a three-pound lead ball swinging from his cock in a special chair that he made and forget that the essence of his work um, probably is more spiritual than the average American has ever even dreamed about.